right? Hello, everyone. Am I audible to, to everybody in the back? Can you hear me? Louder? OK. Uh, I'll try. I have a cold, so I'll do my best. Um, so hi, I'm um, Alex from NVIDIA. It's great to be here today. Um, I'm just going to, to go through some of uh, the challenges that we had in uh, porting Nuvo to, to the Tegra 2K1, which is our latest um, SSD, and explain a little bit how we uh, came to become mm, contributors to, to the Nuvo project. So uh, just a little bit of, um, of story so far. In 2014, last year, we released the Tegra K1 system and chip, which is an ARM-based uh, SSD. It um, comes with two in two versions, 32-bit and 64-bit. Um, therefore, uh, another of its specifics is that it is the first uh, SOC from NVIDIA that uses the same GPU architecture as uh, desktop GPU. So before before K1, we were using uh, a, a dedicated GPU architecture for, for mobile, which was GeForce uh, ULT. For K1, we just took Kepler and put it uh, into, into the SOC. So it's the <coughs> actually the same GPU as what you find on your, uh, on your desktop chip. And well, an interesting fact is that uh, Nuvo supports Kepler on desktop already pretty well. So we just decided to see how, how hard it could be to get it to work on, um, on Nuvo. And in 2014, February 1st, we, we actually started sending packages to, uh, to, to, the, to the Nuvo guys, uh, to the supervisor from Hippo. And well, interestingly, it was just, just one year before. Uh, so first, I'm going to show you a little bit where we are today, uh, one year later. So here it is. So this is uh, Jetson 2K1. It's a lovely um, ARM development board with, uh, with K1 inside the 32-bit version. And well, it's very well supported upstream. It's, uh, it's probably one of the best supported SSD boards uh, upstream. You can just check out Git. You have a device tree for it. You can tile it to boot. Uh, U-boot also, also works. Uh, it's, it's a breeze to work on. And so we can't believe it's that English. <laughs> this is Wayland uh, West Point. It's probably running on top of uh, Nuvo. you a couple of open here uh, easier stuff I think this is good there we go and here are a couple of uh, ES2 uh, GLES2 benchmarks running on um, here in Mark II so I don't know if you can see the the performance over there but it it has a pretty pretty decent uh, FPS for uh, for SSD, <laughs> and <laughs> so it, it, it runs some of the most complex stuff here. So you have some some pretty complex shaders r running running here. So this is Nvidia's latest SOC running a completely free software graphics stack, and. Uh, and West Point. So just messing up things a little bit in the front. Maybe we can run uh, another GLES trial here. We are going to run some, some GPU stuff. And my SD card is a little bit slow. OK, here we go. So you have pretty, well, decent support already, I believe, in terms of the code. Um, this is Wayland. Uh, we don't we don't have interestingly we don't have X support yet, but uh, I think <laughs> <laughs> we, we we're aiming for the future here. Okay, <laughs> and uh, no, uh, well I think it, it should be pretty easy to implement using using Glamour, and uh, it's probably not not much work. It's just you haven't spent any time on it. 
But if someone wants to give it a try, I'm, I'm sure it's pretty, pretty trivial to do. <coughs> so let me go back to the slide here. trouble clicking here. Being a dot light. Ah, oh, come on. <laughs> it was working just fine this morning. It's Intel graphics card. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, I apologize. Let me just restart my session again. There we are, sorry. <coughs> Not supposed to see this one. Okay, sorry, I just got dropped sometimes. Um, that's another slide. So uh, first, I would like to give a couple of credits because there's been many people involved with this. Uh, a couple of engineers have been uh, working on this, either by submitting patches to Nuvo or giving advice on how to, 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 to do the porting because uh, we had plenty of TP questions. Um, and of course, we, we have to, to thank the whole Nuvo community. It has been absolutely fantastic to, to work with on this, and it has been very supportive towards our efforts. So the outline of this talk, uh, <coughs> I'll give a very quick overview of um, GK2A. GK2A is the GPU that we had in Tegraph 1 so we'll call it by, by this name. And, uh, and Nuvo, it's going to be very, very high level. Uh, I will explain how we did the new role bring up on Tegraph 2.1. Uh, the first part will be a little bit more interesting as I'll come with some of the challenges that we met with memory management. Uh, some of these challenges that we addressed, some of them are still open questions. So it would be nice to have uh, your opinion on this as well. Uh, then I'm going to talk about the engine playout on Tegra, which is a little bit particular, especially when you compare it to um, to the desktop GPU. Then a very, very quick word on user space and meta. It's going to be quick because it basically works. So first, uh, GK2A. GK2A is, uh, as I explained, it's a separate GPU. It's basically state-of-the-art GPU that supports OpenGL 4.3, GLEF 3, 
uh, to the has unified storage. And what's interesting for us for this talk is that uh, the GPU is basically virtualized per, per process. So each process that uses the that makes use of the GPU gets its own <coughs> uh, its own context, including <coughs> the state of the engine, which you can switch from process to process, including uh, a virtual memory space that allows us to ensure that um, a process cannot read memory that belongs to it using the GPU, uh, which some of the older uh, mobile GPUs allow allow to do. And well, classically, graphic jobs are submitting using a push buffer by user space. User space writes a list of commands it would like the GPU to run into a buffer, gives this buffer to to to, to, the, to the to the driver to the hardware, and the hardware basically decodes these commands, executes them, and uh, eventually can notice uh, once the job is, is finished, is in transit. So Nouveau is, um, as you probably know, the open source uh, driver for NVIDIA GPUs. Open source and, and, and free software supports, the free stack supports all the cool interfaces in the kernel, GRM, KMS, um, which the NVIDIA proprietary GPU doesn't. It wha wha what's really what's really impressive at first is that it supports NVIDIA GPUs from 1998 to the latest Maxwell GPUs that that just released la last year. So it's it's really really impressive. You, you need a pretty nice interior archi architecture to do that. So Nouveau is extremely modular, and the way um <coughs> the way you support a, a new GPU is that you basically make an assembly of all the NG and sub-device drivers that Nouveau supports. For instance, um, in a GPU, typically you, you have a driver for the, the FIFO engine, another for the graphics engine, another for copy engine, uh, encoding, and so on. And so you put them you put them together, and that that defines a GPU for you. And the reason for that design is uh, is because there is a lot of <coughs> redundancy. Between uh, between GPUs, uh, okay. So, so this is basically the, the definition for GK two OS here. So all, all you have to do is just select a driver for uh, the frame buffer for the NMU, FIFO, graphics engine. And if you look at it, some of the some of the drivers start with GK two OS, which means that they have been specifically written for uh, for for this GPU. But a lot of them actually come from previous generations of GPUs. So there's a lot of code that you, you can you can you can reuse because it's just the same part as as the desktop GPU. And and actually some of uh, some of these drivers here that are apparently written specifically for GK2 OS. Well, this is the graphics class slider. Basically, all, all that we had to do to get GK2 OS to render graphics on Nouveau, to render 3D on Nouveau, was to define uh, the specific set of classes that it supports, that is unique to it. And all the rest, we could reuse the, the functions that were already in Nouveau. Uh, we, had, we actually had to make a couple of Changes in this uh, in this function, but it's really really not really not a big thing. Uh, on the other hand, you have some drivers that you had to write completely from scratch, uh, which is a lot more work. So this is a clock driver to that supports that has reclocking support to GK two way. So this one is a little bit um, is a little bit larger, but this this is really the this is not the majority of the case. Most of the time, we have been really surprised to see how uh, how well uh, the code from uh, from Nouveau works here. So, if we want to support GK two OS here, there are two things that we need to do. First, is finding which engines and sub devs we can uh, we can use for GK two OS and writing the ones that are missing, as I just saw. And on a more 
in a more general fashion, simply allowing Nouveau to work on, on Segura. Because Segura is a very, very different beast from, uh, from what Nouveau is used to, to, to work with. Um, one of the first differences is that Nouveau has a very strong, uh, Nouveau had, sorry, a very strong expectancy to run on, to have a GPU on uh, behind a, a PCI bus, PCI Express or GPU, you name it. Uh, which is not what, uh, which is not where the GPU is on Segura. Uh, on Segura, the <coughs> GPU is, 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 is connected to the AMDA bus directly. It's a direct client to, to HPS or Vivaiti. So we, d we just don't have a PCI bus. And when Nuvo was, was trying to do some PC PCI specific stuff, like PCI provides the IO range for the GPU registers uh, to or, or, or the bar area. And so uh, has a couple of obsolete functions that were PCI map stage, but you can use to map system memory to, to, to the GPU. So whenever you, you met these stages, basically Nouveau, Nouveau would crash. <coughs> so what we had to do was to abstract the bus uh, and add platform bus support. And if you work with SSD, you, you work a lot with, with, uh, with platform devices, which is a bus that is for something that doesn't have a bus and is not discoverable. So instead of writing IO addresses using PCI, we just write them using device tree and we replace the dedicated PCI map stage using, uh, with the equivalent function for the DM API, which works also for PCI. So after you do this, which corresponds to about 350 line of code sent to, s to support platform device and 300 more to prob a GPU uh, from, from the device tree. So not, not that much work. You can instantiate Nouveau from, uh, from, from from the device tree and just see it, see it crash a little bit later because it won't find the video BIOS, which is also something that is missing on Segra. Uh, video BIOS provides a lot of useful information on, on the stock GPUs, including voltage tables for uh, DVFS. And it also performs some of uh, the core initialization. So that was not done on Segra. So here there's not, well, there's only one thing you can do, just simply abstract again and uh, provide an, an alternate way to, to get to get this information on the table and perform the necessary initialization right from the driver instead of expecting the, the video BIOS to, to do it. <coughs> so in general, most of the problems we had were this, things that Nubo were expecting to find, but, but you could not find on Tegra. And the main annoyance in that respect was that Tegra does not have video RAM. Um, here the, on, Segra, the GPU is competing with other devices on the SSD for system memory, be it bandwidth or, or just um, memory memory pages. So the GPU is directly in front of Segra's memory controller. It doesn't have any video memory of its own. Uh, so this has huge consequences. Uh, this is a little bit, there's a lot of stuff here I failed to explain. <coughs> this is how address translation works on, on a desktop. GPU. Um, so the top line is uh, the CPU virtual address, which you, which is per, per process, which I this is how you implement memory protection across the across processes, which you can map at page granularity. So typically, 4K memory pages into the CPU physical address space. So part of the of this physical address space is directly mapped to the system RAM. And this is how you provide memory to your, um, to your, uh, to, to your program. Um, the GPU also has, as I explained before, a virtual space of its own to make sure that GPUs cannot, uh, GPU processes cannot read uh, each other's memory. So the memory that the GPU is typically going to use is the video RAM, the, the memory that is on the um, on the GPU card. So all the same, it's going to it's it's going to have mapping to this to this video RAM, and it can it can use it. Sometimes you need to share memory between the CPU and the GPU. So the GPU can also have mapping to the system memory, but this time if you have to cross the PCI bus, 
uh, and it's it's slower because the system is typically slower, and you have to cross to cross the bus. So the GPU is going to try to maximize using uh, using this this video run. Uh, and all the same, the CPU also has a way to read the GPU memory by using a small uh, small aperture that is, I think, 128 gigabytes on on most of the cards, uh, which is called the bar. And so this bar is is just um, it, it's it's like a small enemy to a small view to, to to the video run. So you can map pages to the bar, then you can map the CPU virtual address space to this bar area, and you can read and write into the into the GPU run. And when you when you do so, you do so by using the GPU path. Um, so you have this configuration. You have GPU uh, video run that is fast for the GPU but slow for the CPU. <coughs> System run that is fast for the CPU, slow for the GPU. And Nuvo is uh, is is built on 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 this model. Um, when you when you allocate buffers, you you basically have two targets. You can decide this buffer should be in in video memory or this buffer should be in system memory. And uh, the Nuvo and, and PCM, which is the system that Nuvo is using behind the scenes, is are going to, to try to maintain this, this requirement. You can move buffers from one place to another if you need it. For instance, if you want to export a buffer using uh, Prime, DMA buff, you have to be in system memory. But, but basically, once you, once, once, when you allocate a buffer, you just decide, I want this to be in video memory, or I want this to be in system memory. And one very good, one very nice thing that, that you have on, on this model GPU is that um, the, coher the coherency between the CPU and the GPU is, is maintained automatically most of the time. Meaning that if you, if the CPU wants to read video memory, it, go it, does, it, does, it does so, sorry, through the bar, which uses the GPU path, so using the GPU cache. And so you, you know that you're going to, to be in sync with the GPU. And when the GPU needs to reach system memory, it does so using uh, PCI, and PCI snoops the accesses that the GPU is doing, and it will automatically uh, invalidate or flush the CPU caches, so that coherency will be maintained um, automatically. So this is a very nice thing to have on, on this of GPU. On Sega, on the other hand, um, <laughs> things are quite different. So on the CPU, the CPU part, no, nothing really changes. But notice that you have <coughs> no video memory, <coughs> and the GPU is going to to use system memory directly, not going to P to PCI. And um, it's not um, it's not it's not a carve out. There are there are some 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 older cards which, uh, which which decides that okay I'm just going to allocate the the last um, 256 megabytes for for, for GPU usage and and then the GPU can use this area of memory and uh, and the CPU cannot use it but th this is not how, how it works it really it really can access any part any part of the system memory and use it as it, as it sees fit and one thing that can seem uh, odd at first sight is that you also have an I/O enemy that adds uh, an optional second layer of translation. So you can have one translation on the GPU virtual address space, which will go again to the <coughs> I/O enemy and access the system run. So I will explain why why we have this uh, later. Oh, and one last point: we still have we still have the bar, which in this case only allows us to access the system run again, but again using the GPU path. So, <coughs> so not having uh, dedicated <coughs> video memory means basically that all the allocations that you are going to do are going to be in, uh, in, in system run. So does it still have sense to have this choice of targets between, uh, between VRAM and system memory in, uh, in Nuvo? That's, uh, th that's one of the, of the first problems that we need, to, we need to solve. How do we manage the fact that we don't have this VRAM device that Nuvo expects uh, so much. The second problem is um, 
how do we make use of this, this IO menu that we have? We have this an, an extra layer of, of compression. What, what is it for? And how, does it, how can we make it fit in Nouveau? Um, the first problem, and the biggest problem of all, is that on, on Tegra, you don't have this implicit coherency between the CPU and the GPU. You have to flush and validate the CPU caches yourself, which is something that Nouveau never did before. Um, So first, how do we live without uh, video memory? Well, we, we tried different approaches. At first, we just decided that we could try to emulate um, a VRAM device. Uh, but we quickly realized that we, this would lead to very suboptimal uh, memory management because the, the driver would, would think, oh, this, this buffer is in VRAM, but I want to export it. I have to move it to system memory. And it will basically copy a buffer from from system memory to system memory. And it makes things a little bit more, uh, more less optimal than, than, than it should be. Um, another thing that we tried, and <coughs> which is the one we, we decided to live with, is that we can just switch in the world to that there are some, some uh, GPUs that don't have VRAM at all, and that should do all the allocation in system memory and, and, and live with it. So this requires more changes to the code, but at least it has the advantage to be to be accurate. Um, and to prevent this unneeded move from, uh, from, from, from happening. So that, that's the decision we, um, that's how we decided to solve, to solve this problem. Next, I need to talk about this IO menu device. So as I explained, it produces a second, lay, a second level of address precisity. Uh, why, why do we need that? Especially since the GPU already has its own MNU and, and can therefore uh, flatten object at will. Well, it can do that once the GPU MNU is set up. But in order to set up the MNU, you already need blocks of memory that needs to be, uh, to be contiguous. And while it's not too hard to find contiguous blocks of memory into, into a video memory that is exclusively dedica dedicated to, to, to the GPU, it's much harder to do so in, in a system memory that, can, that is used by basically everybody else and can be core fragmented much more, much more quickly. So one use, one use of the IO MNU is to, to let the GPU, to to give the GPU the, the illusion that uh, it has lots of contiguous memory available, while it doesn't. The alternative is using CMA, but again, this is uh, a little bit uh, suboptimal. Um, and there is a second advantage to having uh, the IO MNU, which is that the, the GPU MNU is, is not so good at, at um, um, at page misses, if you if you need to, uh, how can I explain? If you if you need to, to fetch to fetch a page into into the TLB, it's much more costly than the IO MNU. The IO MNU is is, is is designed for that. So if we can flatten GPU objects on uh, in the IO MNU uh, virtualizer space, we can use large pages on the GPU MNU and have um, much less misses than we would have if we had to, to merge it to, to map every page individually. So it's also, it's also here for, for performance reasons. So now the CPU, GPU coherency issue. So this, is, this was the biggest issue that, um, that we had. <coughs> on, on desktop, it's handled transparently, but we have no template on Tegra. So well, for, for most of the of the of the buffer of the buffer objects, it's not that much a big deal because there are some uh, some groups in Nouveau in uh, in which we know that uh, now is a good time to to invalidate uh, or to, to 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 synchronize this buffer between between the CPU and GPU. So in the general case, it's it's not that much worse. We can solve it using using the GNU API, but there are still some objects from which we don't want to, 
to use caches in which we don't want to explicitly think. Uh, one of them are fences. So fences are basically a small counter which the GPU can, uh, into which the GPU can write the values, usually it will increase it, uh, after it has performed a certain job, and this allows the CPU to keep track of the progress of a graphics job. So when the CPU sees that a fence has switched to, to this value, it knows that it can use this buffer and uh, give it to some other engine or display it or, or anything else. So if you have to, if you have to invalidate the, the caches every time you try to reach this fence, it's, it's going to be, to be very costly. So for this, um, for this use case, we, we really want, the ob we really want um, to read directly from memory by passing the cache. We have the same problem with GP FIFOs. GP FIFOs are um, the, the list of switch buffers, the list of graphics of, of GPU jobs that we want to, to run. And uh, so at the same, we just submit a new job, a, a new switch buffer to the GPU. We write its address into the, into the GP FIFO and we ask the um, GPU to, to, to process it. And we don't want to think, to we don't want to trust the, the cache again uh, every time we do this. So for this, uh, for this kind of object, we introduce a new flag that, uh, that, that specifies that we, we want to have a, a coherent mapping between, between the CPU and GPU. So, well, problem solved, except with that ARM um, makes things a little bit more difficult. And this is a little bit hard to explain here, but um, ARM has a specific issue, which is that you cannot map a given memory page uh, several times with different attributes. So you cannot have a memory page that is mapped cached at uh, somewhere and mapped uncached in a s in, in some some other uh, some other context or some in some other area of the of the address space. Uh, and uh, the reason why this is a big problem is that the kernel al already has the the low end mapping, like the, the lower part of the memory is is mapped one to one uh, into into the into the kernel address space. So on Tegra, this is the first seven hundred sixty megabytes. Of uh, of RAM that are mapped that way, and they are mapped with cache attributes, which means that if you want to use this uh, this this memory area for for fences, uh, we are gonna run into trouble. So the ARM specification says the behavior is undefined, and at first we tried to to just ignore that, and then we we realized that we had some very very strange issues, like uh, the jailmark to benchmark that I that I ran before, it would would work fine most of the time. And then you would start running perf stop on, uh, on your machine and it would freeze for 10 seconds uh, every, every, every now and then. And this was at this time, ARM decided, oh, it's time to switch to undefined behavior for this, uh, for this mapping. Uh, so it was really, really strange. And we, we finally tracked it down to, uh, to, 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 to this. So, <coughs> so we cannot remap this memory with, with uncached attributes. How can how can we do? Um, <coughs> there are two ways to solve this problem. The first is to use the GPU path for, uh, for, for, this, for this object. So we use the bar. We just map the object to the bar and we access it. We let the CPU access it through the bar mapping. That way it will use the GPU path and it will uh, preserve coherency. The problem is that the bar is, is a rel relatively scarce resource. We only have uh, 128 gigabytes of it. Um, well, it takes a lot of fences to, to, fill, to fill that space, but still, it's a, it's, a, it's a finite resource. Another solution is to allocate a coherent buffer using the DNA API. So the DNA API, uh, DNA, DNA alloc coherent, kind of solved this, I this issue on ARM by transparently remapping the, or, or fixing the low main mapping so that you can um, access, access it uncached. But once again, you mu if, you, if you use it, if you reuse it, you must make sure that it, is, uh, it, it will remain un uncached here. The inconvenience here is that you will end up with a permanent kernel mapping on, the, on this object, which might be a big deal or not, 
Uh, but mo most of the things you use are typically safe, plus the user space. So you, you have no use for uh, for kind of mapping for them. But um, at at this point, we we have no no better solution than uh, than this two. So enough with memory. Uh, let's talk a little bit about the engine layout. So that's the second interesting thing on, on Tegra. If you take a, a desktop card, um, you have you have plenty of things in your GPU package. You have uh, you have a graphics engine which does all all the three D stuff. You have display controllers that sends sends buffers to your to your screen. Uh, you have video decoders, video encoder, copy engines. Uh, you have a VRAM that is also handled. So all all these all these parts are handled by the same buffer, which means that once you you render a, you render um, a buffer using your graphics engine, you want to display it it's in the same driver. So there's nothing easier than that. You just you just make a driver passive to, to the display engine, and, and it just works. On Tegra, we only have a graphics engine in, uh, in the GPU IP. Why? Because, uh, because we already have a different IP that does video encoding, uh, that can be supported by, uh, by, Vf4, by Video for Linux. I don't think it is right now, but uh, <laughs> uh, hopefully it will. Um, all the same, the display controller is not part of the GPU. The display controller is a different IP that is driven by Tegra DRM, which is a different driver. And of course, all, all, all these people are just uh, using the system RAM, Tegra storage, and just completing the bandwidth and so on. Uh, but what this means is that um, on Tegra Nouveau is going to drive a lot less hardware than it does on desktop. And it also means that you will have to make buffers cross dri the driver boundary much more often than you would here. If you want to display uh, a buffer that you just rendered, you have to pass it from Nuvo to, to Tegra DRM. So this means, uh, so it, it's, it's actually pretty close from, uh, from, from Optimus, recent Optimus laptop, where you have um, an, Intel, an Intel integrated GPU that drives uh, display and you have um, NVIDIA GPU that you can activate, and it will pass the buffer to the to the Intel driver to for to to, to compose or, or display them. So on on this setup, uh, you mu you must have Prime if if you want to display anything. If you do off screen rendering, it's fine. If you want to start displaying things using using the GPU, you you must have uh, Prime support. And uh, uh, that's actually interesting because there's. One feature that made it into the kernel, I think, two years ago, which is uh, our render nodes, uh, a separation of remote clicking and uh, GPU acceleration cap capabilities. And on Tegra K1, we, we have exactly this. We have, uh, we have a card device that is driven by Tegra DRM, which is only capable of setting a mode and displaying planes, which is ba basically what Terry uh, explained two hours ago. And you have a, rend a render device, which uh, to which you can you can submit um, jobs to jobs about stuff to render, but cannot cannot display it at all. And so, so it it <coughs> it means sorry, um, it means that even simple applications like simple GBM application like need to to understand this and you need to handle this case. For instance, if you want to write PMX cube on, uh, on, on Tegra, uh, you, you will have to change the code a little bit because PMX cube just assumes that the card device also has GPU rendering capa capabilities and is going to send the, the GPU commands to this device. But on, on Tegra, it's not going to work. So you have to make it open both devices, um, use Prime to to share the the, render the the frame buffer between uh, between Tegra DRM and Nuvo and uh, and does and does all the all the things that. So it's not it's not that big uh, a change, but it's something you have to manage at some level. Um, we uh, actually Terry tried to 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 handle it at at the meta level, so to make so to make it possible to just run meta applications uh, without any any change. Uh, it's it's still ongoing, I think. Um, 
So it's, it's, this is another problem, but I think it, it's not a discussion, right? More or less. Yeah, so that's another problem we have. <coughs> so thi this, this separation actually brings lots of a couple of other uh, philosophical questions. So let's say you have this uh, little application that <coughs> that captures a buffer from uh, from a capture device using, say, using a, a VPRLC driver, uh, passes it to Nouveau to apply some effects on on, on, um, on those frames using the GPU, and then passes it to, an, uh, to, to the encoding hardware to create a DP8 or uh, HP64 stream that you will save on disk, while at the same time displaying the, the, the frames on the disk disk. So you have you have this thing that you want to that you want to implement. Uh, who's supposed to allocate the memory for the buffer? <coughs> are you are you asking the the, the camera uh, the camera driver to, to to allocate the buffer? Are you asking Nouveau to allocate to allocate the buffer because it's going to to perform? Who who's supposed to allocate the buffer? Uh, one well, a Android. Um, kind of address this issue by, by having its own independent memory allocator that is called ION. So you have an ION device which you can uh, open and from which you can, you can allocate memory and then you can import this memory into, into the different buffers. So this is one thing that you, that, that you can do, but you still, have, uh, you still have a problem that all these engines don't necessarily have the same, the same capabilities. They cannot necessarily work with the same memory ranges they cannot necessarily necessarily work with the same buffer format. <coughs> um, Kepler you typically renders its buffers in, in, in child mode uh, instead of instead of linear mode. It just it just make it just renders blocks. Um, from on, on it just makes adjacent pixels closer in memory so that um, as to minimize cache misses. <coughs> So if you render uh, if you render a buffer in child mode and pass it to a display controller that is that does not understand this uh, this format, you're just going to have garbage on your screen. So in the in the case of a, of a SOC like Tegra, we we try to design the engine so that they can they can work together nicely. But if you have something that is more et heterogeneous, how do you how do you handle that? So well for for Tegra, it's not not really a problem, but it's it's more general question that is, uh, I think, is, is interesting to think about. Sorry? Okay. We have an expert of uh, the, the proprietary Linux driver. Maybe, <laughs> maybe he can. Uh, I don't. Ha have you heard the question? Okay, sorry. Can you repeat the question? Okay, sorry, so I think I misunderstood your question. It has nothing to do with the proprietary NVIDIA yeah, driver. Okay, yeah. So that, that sounds like, yeah, that sounds like a good fit. I, w I was not aware of, of this, so, 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 so thank you. So how, how is it called already? The, the Media Controller Primer. Is it in the kernel? Okay. Oh, should I should look at video for Linux more, more often, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sounds, that sounds good. Um, all right. Uh, I'm just going to, to give a very quick word about um, about the user space changes that we had to do to, to, to get it to work. So we wanted we wanted Mesa to, to, to run on uh, on Display Two Eight. Uh, the first thing that we did is that we made Mesa recognize Display Two Eight as a GPU, and at, at that time we still have that dummy VM device. So we 
just had to sync 25 lines of code to recognize the GPU and just just write to render a triangle and to our big surprise, we got the triangle. Uh, I, I, I spent, I think, two hours checking uh, that it did not fall back to software <laughs> rendering because <laughs> it was like, nah, <laughs> you must be kidding. But uh, no, no, actually, actually it worked. And, and, and after that, uh, we worked with Terry to, to plug, uh, to, to support Prime and plug uh, move all the code to JRM and, uh, and KMS Cube uh, run. And then some people from uh, a UK company called Chopsync, I, I don't know if some of them are, are here. I think I think at least one of them should should be here anyway. Uh, did the same thing on on Western, and we got we got Wayland for just for for, for nothing. Um, so this th this initial uh, support is is very easy to obtain. Once we remove the the VRAM device, then you have to make user space also aware of that. Not all GPUs have video memory. And uh, you have to fall back to pixel memory when you, when you don't have it. So it's some more work that is required for this, um, <coughs> which we did. But it is, it again, it's not very huge. I think it's less than, less than 50 lines in, in Mutas. And we can work with that, with that VRAM device. Uh, and we still have some, some stuff to do in order to integrate seamlessly with Sega JRM. As I explained, the, the low level applications uh, like VPNs, you have to understand that you cannot, you cannot give. Um, Render rendering jobs to to the charge device, and you have to you have to assign another device and uh, and share the buffer between between the two. So some words of uh, conclusion and things that we still have to do. A GK two now is is very very close to work out of the box with Nuvo, using only upstream software. Uh, we are super close to it. Just we we just have a couple of patches in my in my tree that I I need to submit or a couple of hacks hacks that we need to to figure out. Uh, but we are we're really, really close to, to have full upstream support uh, with GK2O. The um, remaining obstacles on top of the patches that we, we still just need to, to submit is uh, firmware distribution. Uh, GK2O requires some, so some, so some firmware to run in order especially to, to do the context switch and for uh, power management, um, which Nuvo typically reverse engineers but we, but we don't we don't have it for GK two way, and um, this is something that we are going to to have to address anyway because starting from Maxwell, uh, some of the firmwares must be signed to run for security reasons, and so we will have to provide uh, Nuvo with with uh, with firmwares that they can they, they can redistribute, <coughs> otherwise we won't be able to use uh, to use Nuvo on the GPU. So this is this is the most pressing issue. We are working on it with um, other Nvidia people and also with with the Nuvo community. Hopefully, it will come to, to an end pretty soon, because right now you don't. I think I don't think you cannot legally run Nuvo on Maxwell, uh, and it's uh, it's a little bit sad. Um, as I said before, working with the Nuvo community has been uh, a very very nice uh, experience, which you know, has been warmly welcomed, and uh, we we actually have learned a lot, a lot of things about. Uh, about driver writing, especially people like me who are not very uh, educated with respect to GPUs. Uh, <laughs> I, I really learned, learned a lot. We had a lot of sessions. Uh, it was actually funny because when you see your NVIDIA.com address, they expect you to know everything about the GPU. And then you like, uh, then you ask a question, how do you do that? So, oh, why don't you use a toolbar? So, oh yeah, it's toolbar. And then you just, just forward to some, uh, to some GPU expert. Oh yeah, it's a toolbar. <laughs> <laughs> but so, but it, it has already been a great, great experience. And, um, well, we, pl we plan to continue it. Uh, we announced last month the next uh, Segura SSD, which is going to be Segura X1 with a Maxwell uh, GPU. We would like to provide the same level uh, of support for, uh, for it as well. And hopefully it's going to translate into, into more meaningful contributions from, uh, from our part because uh, when, when we arrived for Kepler, Kepler's support was already excellent on, on Nuvo. Uh, for Maxwell, it's, uh, it's 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 not as good yet. So hopefully, we can also contribute more code on that uh, on that front. Uh, so thank you very much. I have put here uh, a little GitHub address, which is um <coughs> the page you can see if you if you if you're interested. If you have a Jetson, I mean 192. Um, if you have a Jetson and are interested in running the a fully open source. Um, 
actually free software graphics pack uh, on it. You can you can you can go there. It's uh, it's it's just basically a bunch of code that compile everything everything you need, and uh, and put you uh, put put up a root file system for you. So uh, thank you. Very if you have, I think we're a little bit short on time because I I screw up uh, when when I'm keeping Azure in my butt. If you have questions, maybe yeah. Yeah, good point. Yeah, <coughs> but I, I I'm not even sure. That in 1995, it was working this way, right? I mean, I, I remember I had a 3D effect, and it was ju just stealing the, the the video output to render 3D. Yeah, it was frequent. So yeah. Sorry. Okay, even even at that time, I, I was too young. Sorry. <laughs> Oh, sorry, we, we have one, one more question. It's, we, 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 I, I want to say yes, because it's very close, but it will very soon, yes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, and, and one, thi one thing I forgot to mention is that we also, so here, this is, this is like our development board, but we have a completely different option support for some of the Tegra consumer devices, uh, Shield, some, uh, some people managed to, to build some options on it on, on shield tablets, which have the same GPU. So I, I cannot guarantee this would work on it. It would require some work at least, but, uh, but maybe you can. Maybe you can expect to have uh, something like, uh, I was dis discussing yesterday with one of the, of the developers of, uh, of repli replicants, and he would be very, very pleased to see, yeah. <laughs> he would be very, very pleased to see to see replicants uh, running on Tegra K1 using Mesa and a fully 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 open graphics pack. Yes, sorry, one more question. Uh, I think it has option support. Yeah, we published we published the device tree for it, so you can you can boot up stream. It's it's under review. Yeah, uh, I I we haven't tried. I don't think we have we tried the GPU on it, but I don't see any reason why it won't why it won't work. All right, thank you very much.